Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Verse 1 through 11. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Verse 1 through 11 of the New International Version. For those who may not have a Bible, it's on the screen for you. It is our custom to stand not just for judges, but also for the reading of God's word. Amen. When you have it, say amen. amen. He's still looking to hold up. Amen. Hold up, wait a minute. Amen. And the word of God reads as such. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept that part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Did it belong to you before you sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Adam and I heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men carried him out. Well, excuse me, for some young men that carried him out. And great fear seized all who had heard what had happened. So he had carried him out forward, wrapped his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Amen. Let me see the presence of our God. Everybody like, ooh, Lord Jesus, Pastor. For a few moments, I have to talk about the subject, keeping up with the Joneses. Keeping up, keeping up with the Joneses. American journalist Irma Bombard once wrote, before you try to keep up with the Joneses, be sure they're not trying to keep up with you. Let's talk about see the, the phrase, keep up with the Joneses, derives from a cartoon strip of the same name that was launched in 1913 and ran for 26 years. The strip creator, Pop Moment, uh, poked fun at our need to do things in order to impress other people. And while I wish I could say on today that um, this need died with the last episode of this comic strip being published, unfortunately, that's not the case. For the truth or told on today, we must admit that many of us are not just trying to keep up with the Joneses, but the Kardashians and whoever else that we know or see and wish we could be like. As a result, if we were honest today, many of us feel inferior or not good enough unless we've acquired what our neighbor has, our coworker or friend has purchased. But this mentality is so persuasive that it has become interwoven to the fabric of our culture and society. I'm thinking when it's reflected in our music, print media, and even on television shows where we are reminded time and time again that you have not arrived or achieved success unless you get dressed right, live right, or drive like somebody else. Which is why too many of us spend more time working two jobs or working too much overtime. Not so we can live comfortably or meet our needs, but rather so we can impress somebody else, thereby trying to keep up with the Joneses. 
Think about it, think about it, think about it. Um, there are some folk, there are some families who spend more time worrying about what other families have, where they vacation, what kind of home they live in, instead of using that same time and energy working and praying for their own family. Exodus 20 and 17 tells us, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or man's servant or female servant or ox or donkey or anything else that is your neighbor's. And while both we may not necessarily um, be trying to um, covet, the truth is that many of us spend too much time focusing on what somebody else has acquired and saying, at least can I get what they have? The, 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 problem, the problem with this mentality church is that too often individuals and families compare themselves to their neighbors as a benchmark for social class or the accumulation of goods. Think about it. Your neighbor buys a new car before you know it. The whole street got the same car they had. Amen, somebody. Which is why we must be careful because for many of us, this mentality pushes us to believe that unless I have what so-and-so has, that I must not be good enough or smart enough or, or, or better enough to say that I actually am good at who I am and what I do. Then as we conclude this series on We Are the Family, I would remiss on today if I did not warn us to understand the fact that the matter is that um, this mentality has caused too to be to, to spend based upon somebody else's standard or financial capacity, which at times has caused our families and our homes to be overextended financially. We go broke trying to impress somebody that don't even know you trying to impress them. When the fact is, you've got to realize that um, it's not about the fact that the fam that someone else's family views you a certain way, but the issue really is. in the way that God would have you to? Or are you using the wrong measuring rod to determine your family's success at the teacher? See, believers in Christ Jesus, we must understand that it's a sin to constantly be unsatisfied, thus seeking more and more that is not in God's will for your life. That's why the apostle Paul told the members of the church in Philippi, he says, I know what it is to be in need, I know what it is to have plenty, and I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether I was well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. For the truth in this church that until we have decided, until we decide to be content with God and how God blesses you and your family. Will always be looking over the fence at someone else's lawn trying to get our grass to be as green as theirs. Well, the truth is that the grass is not always greener on the other side. For some of it might just be turf. Because if you look at our text on today, Luke, the author of Acts of Apostles, shared with us, Deacon Paul, a situation which rocked the core of the Jerusalem church. For Luke informed the readers of the particular families failed and fatal attempt to keep up with the Joneses. You know, in order to better understand um, the severity of Ananias and Sapphira's actions, you gotta understand um, the context that was happening in the church at Jerusalem. For Luke records later in chapter 4, Quartel starting in verse 32, that even though Peter and John had just been arrested and harassed by the Sanhedrin court, the church at large was more united than ever. So much so that the church in Jerusalem here had a mentality to say that no matter what family was in need or destitute, they had decided that no family would go back. All because they, they said to themselves that it was unconscionable for us to worship with other families and let a member of our church family struggle. And because the Bible says that many of them saw property and even homes were needed to assist other family members who were struggling financially. In chapter 4, who specifically highlights the generosity of one member of the church in particular, whose name was Barnabas, who sold a field which belonged to him and gave all the proceeds to the church 
so that those in need would never go without him. Yet even then, when we get to chapter 5, we learn that another family within this same church has also wanted, has decided to give to this great cause, but they give for the wrong reasons. If I want to suggest that Ananias, whose name is, means God is generous, Zavala, whose name meant God is a jewel, did not sell their land because they were inspired and moved by the apostles' offers for it. Nor were they compelled to give because they realized how good God had been to them and wanted to be a blessing to some of us. No, um, I would argue that um, this family sold their land and gave the proceeds of the church all because they wanted to keep up with the Joneses. See, this family did not want to be outdone by other folk in the church. And then when they decided to sell their land and only give a portion of the proceeds so they could have their name on a church plaque or have their name listed in the bulletin. Thus, the text is said to keep us on today. What happens when families are more focused on keeping up with other folk than keeping in line with God's word? Thus, the question today becomes for the ask is, what happens when a family tries to keep up with the Joneses? First thing is this, when you try to keep up with folk who aren't who God wants you to be, you end up conspiring. The first thing that Luke informs us about this family is that they conspire. We see this in the first few verses of chapter 5, that Ananias and Sapphira got together and intentionally decided that if keeping up appearances were required them to then conspire, they said, I'll do whatever it takes to keep up with other people. Well, that's because of verse 1 and 2 suggests to us that even before this family had sold their property, feed me, that they not only had did this in order to be seen, they did it so they could be seen doing good, as opposed to actually being good and helping somebody else in need. Therefore, their act of giving was not genuine, but in fact, it was deceptive. It's deceptive because, according to chapters 4 and 5, any member of the church who had sold church did it willingly and not do to any church regulation or policy. For no one in this church was pressured or expected to make sure to give such a generous gift to the house of God. We know this because of Luke informed us later in chapter 12 that Mary, John's mother, chose to not sell her home, but we find out later that the church was actually worshiping and praying for people's release in her own home. Yet the Bible never chastised her or give any indication that she was ridiculed or looked down upon because she had not done what others had done. Yet Ananias and Sapphira conspired and sold their land, decided only give a portion of the pros of the church, which on its merit by itself was not a sin. Thus, church, the issue was not the amount and we just family decided to give to the church, but it was the lie in which they told and they gave their gift to the church. Again, this family was under no obligation, no spiritual command or biblical command to sell their property nor give certain amount to the church. Yet, because of their intention was to give, was motivated by pride and greed, they conspired to make their gift appear more generous than what it actually was. As a result, glory and his family was more concerned about keeping up appearances and being the talk of the church, which prompted them to conspire to deceive the church about what they were really giving to the Lord. The word conspire means to agree together, especially secretly, to do something wrong or evil or illegal. Thus, the fact of this family minister where I felt the need to conspire and lie about how much they received from the cell of their land. Shows they were focused on the wrong thing. For Ananias and Sapphira were more concerned about how others would view them and would celebrate the gift that they gave than rather and hide the truth from them. Whether you and your, whatever you and your family 
your family is out of focus. Please understand, please understand uh, that you don't have to, that, that you don't have to worry about trying to go broke and please other folk, but you've got to learn that the same folk that you're trying to keep up with and trying to live right are the same folk who cannot put you in heaven or hell, are the same folk who cannot bless you beyond your imagination. So instead of trying to convince other folk that you are the hustlers, you got to learn to say, I to do it does not do it it is 
sin for him. We couldn't ignore that both of these family members, Ananias and Sapphira, knew better because Luke tells us prior to their actions here, they were active disciples at the church in Jerusalem. Which means that they not only had sat on the apostles' teaching, but they had heard how God had used Peter and John to heal the lame man at the gate called Beautiful. Thus, it's safe to assume that both these family members knew better, but still consented instead of speaking up for righteousness. Church, this is a warning to us all today that as we seek to build stronger and more loving families, that we must be careful to not turn a blind eye to actions by our family when we know their actions are wrong. This is the other week we were reminded our leadership summit, my sister Missy, she said, when you see something, yeah, 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 say something, say something. So the truth is that men will see stuff every day and don't say a word to our family members about what they've done wrong. Beloved, don't let your family go to hell in a handbasket trying to keep up appearances with other people. Don't let your relatives mess up their destiny in God all because you decided to go along, to get along. But instead, we've got to know that when something is wrong, we've got to speak up and say, regardless of how you might think about it, regardless if you like what I've got to say, I've got a spiritual obligation to speak against stuff that I know is not popular and not stuff that's not Don't you 
that. Stop wanting what your neighbor has. Stop trolling folk on social media and Facebook and Instagram. Say, oh, she went there, they went there. You don't know what they had to go through to have that house, have that car, have that trip. There's a whole lot of people got a lot of stuff who are poor in spirit, who don't have no peace. And here you go, where they got two nickels to run together, they got no peace. Then folk will live in that house. That what I have comes from God. Amen. Not that he wants you to be a pauper. He wants you to be blessed. But you ain't got to conspire. Just be faithful. Amen. You ain't got to consent and do something that's wrong. Just be faithful. Amen. And when you get caught, don't lie. Amen. <laughs> Just fess up. Amen. Thank you, dear. Let's run up. Fess up if you mess up. Because he knows all. And he sees all. But if you confess, I've done wrong. I don't care what I have on this side, I've messed up. You don't know my story. You don't know my struggle, my strife. But I'm going to let the Lord know, God, I'm sorry. And if I confess, He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you. From all your unrighteousness. Don't lose your Try your best.